Hi, I'm Emily, a 34-year-old who's been navigating the choppy waters of marriage with my husband, Jake, for a solid decade. But before I dive into the saga, do me a favor. Hit that like button and subscribe for more stories from the front lines of family drama. Now let me set the scene. Jake and I, we've built a pretty good life together. I've carved out a successful career that not only pays well, but has been the bedrock of our financial stability. Jake has always been supportive, but if there's one thorn in our side, it's his mother, Karen. Emily, when are you going to give Jake and me some good news? Karen would often start off our Sunday dinners with a jab disguised as a question. It wasn't just about grandchildren. No, Karen had a particular talent for making every conversation a critique session, especially targeting my career and our lifestyle choices. During one particularly tense dinner, as I passed the mashed potatoes to Karen, she dropped one of her classic lines. Really, Emily, another vacation? I would have thought saving for a rainy day would be more sensible. Her tone, dripping with disapproval, was all too familiar. Mom, Emily works hard. We both agree on our finances, Jake chimed in, trying to deflect the tension. I squeezed his hand under the table, a silent thank you for the solidarity. But it wasn't just the snide remarks about our spending, or the lack of grandchildren. Karen's coldness seeped into every corner of our interactions. She had an uncanny way of dismissing my achievements, changing the subject whenever I shared any news about a promotion or a successful project. Emily is being considered for another promotion, Mom. Jake would start, his voice filled with pride. That's nice, dear, Karen would respond, her eyes scanning the room as if looking for a more interesting topic. Did I tell you about Tom's new project? Now there's a job that makes a difference. Despite Karen's attitude, I kept my head high, always polite, always trying to mend fences. At family gatherings, I was the one who made sure everyone's glass was full, the one who remembered her sister-in-law's birthday, the one who organized the holiday meals. If peace was possible, I wanted to be the bridge. But as much as I tried, as the years rolled on, I felt the strain of always being the bigger person. Jake noticed, too. He'd catch me in the kitchen, a little worn out, and pull me into a hug. We don't have to stay long, he'd whisper, always ready to make an escape if it got too much. Yet, I persisted, hoping maybe, just maybe, things could be different. But as our 10th anniversary approached, little did I know, the storm was just beginning to brew, and it would test everything I thought I knew about what family meant. Stick around, because this story is just getting started. It was a crisp autumn evening when Jake and I pulled up to Karen's house, ready for what I thought was just another planning session for Tom's upcoming wedding. The leaves crunched under our feet as we walked up the driveway, a reminder that seasons were changing. But some things, like family dynamics, seemed frozen in time. Inside, the dining room was set for a feast, and despite my reservations about Karen, the aroma of roasted chicken and her famous apple pie did put me momentarily at ease. Tom and his fiancée, Lisa, greeted us with smiles that didn't quite meet their eyes. Something was off, but I brushed the feeling aside, chalking it up to pre-wedding jitters. We really appreciate your help with the wedding costs, Emily. It means a lot to us, Lisa started, her voice sincere. I nodded, happy to help. After all, Tom was Jake's brother, and despite everything, family mattered to me. As we settled around the table, Karen wasted no time. We need to talk about the wedding gift, she began, her tone serious. I assumed she meant something along the lines of a family heirloom, or perhaps contributing to the honeymoon. But then, Tom took a deep breath. We were thinking, since you've done so well for yourselves, maybe you could gift us a house. It would be a great start for us. The fork I was holding dropped to my plate with a clatter that echoed my shock. A house? I managed to say, my voice a mix of disbelief and confusion. Jake's face mirrored my own. Mom, that's not a reasonable request. We've already covered the wedding expenses. A house is... That's a whole different level. Karen's eyes narrowed. But Emily can afford it. Wouldn't you want to give Tom a good start? It's only fair, considering what you two have. The audacity of the demand left me reeling. I looked across the table at Tom, hoping to find some hint of embarrassment or disagreement. But he only nodded along with Karen. Karen... We're not in a position to buy anyone a house. We have our own future and responsibilities to think about, I responded firmly, my voice steady despite the rising anger. But Emily, it's not like it's a big deal for you. 
You make more than enough, Tom chimed in, his tone a mixture of entitlement and expectation. I felt Jake's hand on my knee, a silent signal of his support. Tom, we're happy to help with the wedding, but buying a house is beyond what we can or will do. It's important for you and Lisa to build your own way, Jake added, his voice calm but assertive. Karen scoffed. I thought you two would want to do something meaningful for family. Clearly, I was wrong. The dinner continued, but the atmosphere was thick with tension. Every bite tasted like sawdust, and the warm room suddenly felt stifling. As the evening dragged on, Jake and I exchanged looks, the same thought clear between us. This was not just about a wedding gift. It was a test of boundaries, and we had to stand our ground. When we finally left, the cool night air was a relief, a sharp contrast to the heat of the arguments that had flared inside. As we drove home, the weight of the evening's revelations hung between us, a silent acknowledgement that things might never be the same again. The ride home from Karen's house was silent, but the storm brewing between Jake and me was far from quiet. We needed to clear the air, and it couldn't wait. As soon as we walked through the front door of our home, the dam broke. You're not seriously considering their demand, are you? I asked, my voice tinged with disbelief. Jake shook his head, his jaw set. Of course not, Emily. It's ridiculous, but I don't know how to handle my mom without causing a rift. That rift is already there, Jake. It's just out in the open now, I countered, frustrated by the situation, but determined to protect our future. The next day, I called Karen, hoping to resolve the tension. But as soon as she picked up, I knew it wasn't going to be easy. Emily, I hope you've reconsidered the house. You know it would mean a lot for Tom and Lisa. Karen's voice was smooth, too smooth. Karen, we need to be clear about this. We are not buying a house. We've already stretched ourselves with the wedding costs, and with twins on the way, our priorities are set on our family's needs, I replied, my tone firm yet respectful. The line was quiet for a moment before Karen let out a scoff. Selfish. That's what you are. After everything we've done for you, you can't help your own family? Her words stung, but I wasn't going to let them weaken my resolve. It's not about being selfish, Karen. It's about being responsible. Jake and I have to plan for our children. They have to come first. You're tearing the family apart with your stinginess. When I was your age, we sacrificed for family. Karen shot back, her voice rising with every word. And we are sacrificing, Karen. We paid for the wedding. But buying a house, that's not sacrifice. That's enabling. Tom and Lisa need to stand on their own, I argued, my patience wearing thin. This is what family does for each other, Emily. You wouldn't understand because you always put yourself first. Karen's accusation hit like a punch. I took a deep breath, steadying my voice. I understand more than you think, Karen. But my first duty is to my children and to making sure their future is secure. If that makes me selfish in your eyes, then I'll have to live with that. You will regret this, Emily. You're pushing everyone away, Karen warned, her voice cold as ice. We'll have to agree to disagree, Karen. Jake and I are united on this, and our decision is final, I said, ending the call before the conversation could escalate any further. As I hung up, I felt both drained and strangely liberated. Standing up to Karen had been terrifying, but necessary. The battle lines were drawn, and while the future was uncertain, one thing was clear. We were in this together, come what may. The days following my conversation with Karen were fraught with tension. Word of our decision spread through the family like wildfire, igniting a series of reactions that only confirmed our fears about the complexities of family loyalty and the expectations that came with it. Jake's phone buzzed incessantly with messages from relatives who had somehow only heard Karen's version of the story. Each text was a mixture of confusion, disappointment, or outright anger. How could you do this to your own brother? One read. Family should be your priority, said another. Each message felt like an accusation, and Jake struggled under the weight of their judgment. One evening, as we sat down after another long day, Jake's frustration boiled over. It's like they only see Karen's side. They don't care about our reasons or the fact that we're about to have twins and need stability more than ever. We know the truth, Jake. We're doing what's best for our family. Maybe it's time we stop trying to please everyone else and start focusing on what we need. The decision to distance ourselves from Karen and Tom wasn't made lightly, 
It came with the heavy realization that some bridges had to be burned for us to build the life we envisioned for our children. It meant declining invitations to family gatherings that Karen was attending, and being selective about the information we shared about our lives. As weeks turned into months, Jake and I found solace in our little world. We attended prenatal classes together, transforming our spare room into a nursery filled with twin cryates, soft blankets, and books that awaited eager little ears. Our home became a sanctuary from the judgment and expectations of others, a place where we could focus on the laughter and love that were soon to double. Our evenings were spent discussing names for our twins, planning family trips, and imagining the kind of parents we wanted to be. These moments, simple yet profound, deepened our bond, reinforcing our commitment to each other and to the path we had chosen. But the peace was not without its shadows. Jake occasionally fell into silent brooding, the estrangement from his family weighing on him. During one such moment, I found him staring out the window, the glow of a setting sun casting long shadows across the room. They're still my family, Emily. It hurts that they can't see why we made this choice, Jake confessed, his voice tinged with sadness. I joined him by the window, wrapping my arm around his waist. I know, love, and maybe one day they'll understand. But right now, our priority has to be these little ones, I said, resting a hand on my swelling belly. Jake nodded, a small smile breaking through his contemplative mood. You're right, and who knows? Maybe this distance will give everyone some perspective. For now, we have each other, and soon, we'll have our twins. That's more than enough. As winter melted into spring, the air buzzed with the promise of new beginnings. Jake and I, now more united than ever, watched with bated breath as the last box was moved into our new home, a spacious, light-filled house in a welcoming neighborhood, perfect for our soon-to-arrive twins. The scent of fresh paint still lingered in the air, mixing with the smell of blooming flowers from the garden outside. We did it, Emily, Jake said, his eyes shining with a mix of pride and relief as he set down a box labeled Baby Stuff. I smiled, looking around at the space that would soon echo with the sounds of our children. We really did. This is going to be a wonderful place to raise our family. In the weeks that followed, our home came to life with the arrival of cribs, toys, and all the paraphernalia that accompanies newborns. Each room was set up with care, ensuring that everything was just right for the twins. Our evenings were spent lounging in what we dubbed the baby room, envisioning the days ahead with our little ones. Meanwhile, the situation with Karen and Tom unfolded much like a cautionary tale. The whispers of their unreasonable expectations and the stress they placed on family ties had started to circulate within their circles. Karen's relentless pursuit of material gain and Tom's sense of entitlement had not only isolated them from us, but also from others who once stood by them. It came to a head when a large investment, spearheaded by Tom, funded in part by money pooled from friends and family under dubious pretenses, crumbled spectacularly. The venture was ambitious, a real estate project meant to cement his status as a successful entrepreneur, but poor management and unrealistic expectations led to its downfall. The news broke out, and the backlash was immediate. Social media buzzed with criticisms, and those who had invested through Tom voiced their outrage publicly. Karen's attempts to defend him only fueled the fire, her indignant responses in various forms painting a picture of a family more concerned with appearances than ethics. As Jake and I watched from afar, the schadenfreude was tempered by a twinge of sadness for the family strife. But it reaffirmed our decision to focus on what was truly important, our integrity, and the future we were building. One quiet evening, as we prepared for bed, Jake turned to me with a thoughtful look. Do you think they'll ever learn from this? He asked, a hint of concern in his voice. I pondered for a moment before replying, maybe in time but our job isn't to wait for them to change. It's to be the best parents we can be and provide a loving, stable home for our children. Jake nodded, a sense of resolve settling over him. You're right. And who knows? Maybe one day they'll see the error of their ways. Until then, we have each other. And soon, our twins. The days rolled on, and as spring turned into summer, our excitement grew. The hospital bags were packed, the nursery was ready, and our hearts were full. When the day finally arrived and our twins were born, 
the joy they brought eclipsed all past hardships. Holding our children for the first time, we knew that no matter what came our way, we had already triumphed by choosing each other and the future of our family. In our new beginning, we found not just the joy of parenthood, but also the peace of having navigated through stormy waters to a place of love and stability. Our story was one of perseverance, of overcoming adversity, not through confrontation, but through unity and a steadfast focus on what mattered most. And as we looked forward to the chapters yet to be written, we did so with the confidence that together we could face anything. And that wraps up our story. Now I've got a question for you all. Do you think Emily and Jake did the right thing by choosing their family's future over meeting the extravagant demands of Karen and Tom, even if it meant distancing themselves from other family members? Share your thoughts and experiences in the comments below. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed the story, and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Your support helps us bring more stories and discussions like this to you. So, what do you think? Dive into the comments and let's get the conversation started.